Wow, you guys, do I have a surprise for you. This week's episode is all about surprises because I was so surprised in the interview that I am about to share with you. I had a chance meeting with Hollis Wilder, who was a friend of my husband's 25 years ago. Yes, I know I always start the show like this, but this is what my life is like. I am open to surprises and I meet amazing people and have synchronicities all of the time. Hollis's story is the absolute encapsulation of being open to surprises and having things happen that you could never imagine. Hollis was a chef living here in Los Angeles for many years. She was very successful. She was on the Jay Leno show. She was the private chef for the Rolling Stones on a private jet. And one day she decides that she wants a new experience. She's open to a surprise. And so she and her husband had just adopted two children and they decide to take their family and go to Orlando, Florida. She knew that Orlando was a place that had a lot of upcoming growth and she thought, I'm gonna open the very first cupcake shop and self-serve frozen yogurt store in all of Florida. Now, during right around this time, she also goes to Sedona, Arizona and participates in a Native American ceremony where she goes on a vision quest. And on this vision quest, she tells me that she is able to release the past, forgive things that happened in the past, and be totally open to whatever the universe has in store for her. She gets back to Florida and the phone rings. And who is it? It's the Cupcake Wars people. For the next six years, she goes on such an adventure. She is traveling, she writes a book, she wins three times, and the way the story unfolds is such a surprise. I hope that you enjoy Hollis. I'm gonna come back after the interview and share a special surprise with you guys. We are gonna do our first giveaway on You Are Complete, and I'm so excited to share it with you. Oh, so wait a second. Open. Okay. LA happened, right? LA happened. Then went to Florida, right? Made the cupcake store. Okay. Then met these powerful six women. Okay. Went on the went to Sedona, Arizona. Said, "What am I supposed to do now? Now okay. that I've let this go, what am I supposed to do now? What's the this is the jumping off point. What okay. happens next?" So I came back to um, Orlando and the phone rang. Were the Cupcake Wars the Food Network? <gasps> okay, get it, get it, get it, get it. Okay, got it. Wow, that's just right. Yep. Okay. Open yourself up, and I love that you asked the question, "What am I supposed to do now?" And that I sounds to me that you were open to whatever that answer was. That's right. I'll whenever do whatever. I've had a radical transformation because I've gotten to the space where I am either desperate or I've let go, and I am literally like. Whatever my purpose is, I really want to do it. And then this magic happens. That's and right. They call you. That's right. You're the only cupcaker in Orlando. Okay. Right. So All they right. call me. So then, this is the short portion of the story. So for the next six years, I do nothing but Food Network shows. I win three times. They keep asking me to come on. I don't have to go after any of this. Wow. Right? Um... Abrams, a reputable publishing house in New York, sees me on the first episode where I'm creating a salmon cupcake. Ooh, is that yes, good? it sounds gross, but yeah, it's I good. Love salmon. So wrap you your tongue it. around this. It's uh, it's an hors d'oeuvre <laughs> in a cupcake paper. Oh, then fast. So you can okay, do it. It's not so for it's, dessert. Oh yeah, no, yeah, no, no. Okay, got it. It's just cupcake sounds like it's got sugar in it. Yes, but it's the container is the cup is a cupcake. Okay, got it. Right, but it can be savory. Yes. So they yeah. stay like a biscuit. Were, right. But it's got salmon on it and creme fresh. Okay. Delish. So the publisher was surfing the TV and saw me talk about a salmon cupcake and Boom. stayed on that and called me and said, we want you to write a cookbook. I mean, this is just falling in your lap. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, Deepak Chopra. I think he says, do what comes easy. Right. Wow. So it's just coming. Okay. It's just coming, right? Okay. okay, so you think, oh, she's, I mean, talk about alchemy, right? Uh-huh. Right? Okay. Yes. So all these things are happening, right? So then I go on the circuit. I'm on talk shows. I'm flying all over the country. People want to do segments with me. Um, 
I am creating this cookbook while being a mother to two little children and still running the cupcake store. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wrote the cookbook when everybody else was asleep. Wow. And I tested the recipes when everybody else was asleep. So I had gone under the hairnet and wasn't spending a lot of time with my children. Mm -hmm. And now I'm writing a cookbook and I'm not spending a lot of time with my children. Mm Mm-hmm was not the plan no so we're already building up a backlog of guilt Mm -hmm. Uh uh-huh a lot of guilt a whole backlog of guilt but while that's all happening i'm like oh my god this is so exciting this book and 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 it just keeps coming and so then you know then i get the onslaught of we want you to be on the show again and so i kept doing it i kept doing it right so whenever you're on a show like that, you don't go on because you're cute and because you think you can make a great red velvet cupcake. You go on because you want to be part of the 5% of the food space that gets recognition in Target and Walmart, right? Oh. Pots and pans and, and sauces and you want to be a household name and be able to go in and get a pot that says Hollis Wilder on it in Target or a pan or a cookbook or yes. a spice, right? Yes. So I knew that. I was very clear about it when I went on mm-hmm. the first time. I'm going to create something extraordinary. And I'm extraordinary because what I get to do is is of my own making. Mm-hmm. Right? Right? Yeah. So in that, I'm extraordinary. So I'm going to make a salmon cupcake. And I'm going to go on that show. And I'm going to be much more than a cupcake baker. Right. And so I knew that Mm -hmm. I knew that this was an opportunity to give back to humanity through a cupcake. Right. Right. Because I'm I'm I am uniquely (gasps) and only myself. Mm -hmm. I'm uniquely myself. No one else is exactly like me. Mm -hmm. So I am incredible in Mm -hmm. that way. Right. Yes. Right. One are you're you're saying that basically like. You're one of a kind. All you know, everybody. Can everybody make a cupcake, is one of a kind. But the way that you are going to express a cupcake will be different than the way anybody else in the entire world can express a cupcake. Right. And well, that makes you extraordinary. But also, it makes other people, everybody else, extraordinary that's too. Right. Got it. That's right. Yes. Thank you for synopsizing that. No problem. So I go on and um, I get this cookbook going, and everything is incredible. And I'm spending the next six years. Um, Here's two big things that happened. Uh, the United States government called me and asked me to go to Cuba to entertain the troops. Really? As a cupcake baker. Wow. And so I flew over there wow. with um, on two D-12 planes out of Jacksonville, Florida. D-12 is what? A D-12 it's is like a, the... not a regular plane? It's not the regular plane. Like, you you don't go on these planes. It's not like a virgin it's, land. Yeah. It's a military plane. Ooh, small? And yes. Like not And they have mesh seats, and you can poo. Poo no. and pee through the mesh Did seat. Did you do and... that? No, I didn't. Okay, but you, you can. You can, yeah, if I, you want. Yeah. Wow, and that's a two really gorgeous experience. guys are there waiting with gloves, and they bring you onto the plane. And also, 2,000 cupcakes. Yeah. Baked. You had to bake them all and then bring them to Cuba? Uh, well, yeah, because um, they we couldn't work it out with the ovens there. It's like, wow. it was crazy. Okay. We couldn't work it out there. So it would have taken a long time to bake them, and I didn't have all my sweeties to help me, and it was right. just, okay. you know, it was a five-day tour. So I wanted it to be seamless. And the reason I needed two planes is because the other plane held all the icing and sprinkles and the rest of the cupcakes, because they couldn't <laughs> hold, right? How fun is that? It's an How fun! It's I'm like, oh my gosh, experience. this is crazy that this is happening to me. <laughs> the U.S. government is giving us a plane and all of the fuel and the manpower to bring me and these cupcakes to Cuba. Crazy. Wow. So it was one thing and then you said there was a second thing. So then I came home from that trip and I was feeling very worn down. Mm-hmm. Isn't that like, interesting how the things that make us like really excited, it's also like can be super draining. But you were doing all the other stuff too. I and was. then you had the guilt that was building because... You were with the babies. That's right. That's right. And I'm basically carrying around my own hair and makeup mm-hmm. costumes. I wasn't carrying them. There was no entourage of people making oh, I me look the way I needed to look. I understand this you personally. Oh. <laughs> I'm like blow drying the food so it still looks like the cheese is hot and myself. <laughs> I know. 
it's so not glamorous. Nothing glamorous about it. No, it's not. No. And all the while that's happening, you know, people are like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. They're inviting me to speak in different parts of the country and all this stuff is happening. So I'm feeling very worn down. Um, and then I had a publicist um, and she said, um, Katie Kirk wants you to come and be on her show. So you would think that Katie is the pinnacle of success. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be on Katie Kirk. Yes. You've I made mean, it. how many... You can't even. She's oh, if you told me I was going to be on Katie Kirk, I'd be like, we've arrived. Yep. And that didn't happen. You didn't go on Katie Kirk. I went on. Oh, you, but you never felt that feeling that you made it. No. Really? The opposite, exactly. What? So I went on, and while I was doing that, plus when I was in Cuba, I had um, <clears throat> a couple of producers were pitching shows for me. Mm -hmm. So they were, you know, pitching to. Oprah, Oprah's network, mm -hmm. um, everything, every network that's out there that now is attaching itself to reality. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and none of those things came together. Mm -hmm. This went on for almost the entire time that I was on Food Network. For so, so for six years, they were always like, oh, we want to do something with you. And, mm -hmm. and okay. then it would fall through. And, and it would just, fall through. Right. Okay. It just didn't happen. <clears throat> So then I'm on Katie Couric, and I had just done Marie Osmond's show. And the producer liked me so much, she said, we'll, we're going to use you for something else. I don't know what it's going to be, but something else is going to happen. And why don't you have your own show? All this, right? So she had, I didn't know this, but she had left Marie. And she went to oh. work for, <clears throat> excuse me, Katie. Do you need some water? I think I just need another sip of tea. Okay. So she'd gone to work for, for Katie. So she called my publicist and said, we want her to be on the show. This is a very important thing. The people who are in their own business need to know. Okay. Very important. Pay attention. I'm paying attention. So you know how we show up and we're, we're a whole like beauty and we bring our own thing. And yes. I bring all the food and I do all my own stuff, right? Right. So my publisher um, said, you know, you're going to be in New York. You should use my assistant. You should use my assistant. She'll help you. Okay. I might need help. I mean, I certainly need somebody to do the tweets and the tools and the tuts and the tapes and yeah. the, all those things, right? Yeah, all the social media. I need somebody to do yeah. all the social media. So I have this girl come. Well, you you know what happens with that. She makes it all about her. Oh, really? She made it all about her. But then the other part of it is that the part producer said, there's, there's a couple parts I'll tell you. I'll give you details on each one, but... The producer said, Katie doesn't do a food segment because she doesn't have a kitchen. Mm -hmm. So she just wants to do a sit-down interview, mm -hmm. and you can bring out the food, and then you have to talk to her about the food, but you have to have it already cooked. Okay. Never done that before. Well, that case got has to be hard because you have to transport it all there and have it looking perfect. Well, but not yeah. only that, I tell you how to make it by talking to you and we interact with one another mm -hmm. so the whole of my ceremony and the way in which i right. am an epicurean is now cut off it's by about the process it's just like this is what this is the end result right so yeah. now let's just have a conversation about it mm -hmm. okay okay totally understand so it's just like when you had that reaction when i said i made a salmon cupcake and you were like oh so katie did the same thing she was like what it's a cupcake it's savory. It's in a pan. How do you make it? Huh? It didn't go well. Oh, wow. It didn't go well. It looks fine. They played it, mm -hmm. but it didn't go well. So while all that's going on, and then the segment, I don't feel that it's not going well, by the way. You're not aware. I'm not aware of it at all. You're just like, I'm on Katie Couric. I'm on Katie Couric, and I'm up and effervescent. Yes. You know, if you watch that segment, you would never know that there was a problem. Okay. So then I finish with the segment, and I go back, and Katie comes over to talk to me afterward, behind the scenes, instead of on camera, which is completely different. Yes. Right? So who pops up in between Katie and I? The assistant? Yeah. And, and what like, does she do? Cock blocks. What does she do? She says, oh my God, I've been watching you my whole life. I've been watching you my entire life. You're my hero. You're incredible. You've done so much for women. Oh my god. Like, gosh. this is my moment. Get out of the way. 
And then the moment was over. Oh. And I didn't get to talk to Katie. And so the next day, I get a phone call from my publicist, and they said, they're not sure they're going to play the episode. Mm-hmm. Katie was really um, taken aback by your assistant. Oh, no, and it wasn't even your assistant. Uh-huh. Oh. And um, not only that, but the the segment was all over the place. Now, having sat here with me for the past however long, not six hours that we've been here, <laughs> you know I jump all over the place. Yeah. So now I have these amazing creations that I put my entire life into right there in a cupcake tin mm-hmm. that I've toiled over, that I didn't get to spend time with my children over, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And she wants me to talk to her about it. And there's no, she also doesn't do, you know, there's no... Um, off-camera interview. We don't mm-hmm. do that. It's live. Mm-hmm. And the the producer of the segment it knew... It feels cold. That's what I'm thinking. It, I'm well, trying to put myself cold. in your She's cold. shoes and the whole thing feels like cold and like very transactional yes. and not like warm. Right. And She's not warm and fuzzy. Okay. I mean, that I guess I could get. But just not yeah. even like any personal no. connection there and that would feel really unfulfilling and just kind of... Right. Ugh. Right. And yeah. food, if food is love, then I'm making it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not able to do that with her. Mm-hmm. So it just becomes a thing. So the they end up playing it anyway, mm-hmm. and it's it's all good. But um, I was really upset. I mean, I was it was devastating for me. Mm-hmm. And then not to mention, but the the assistant also did all the Twitter through her Twitter, not mine. Wow, that's just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You also didn't get any of the I didn't get publicity. any of that either. Yeah. Right. And my publisher would not give Katie the um, 150 books for each of the audience members. Mm. So there were a couple things like that that fell apart. So then I didn't get, there were all no's across the board with the TV show. Oh, wow. And I'm still feeling sick. So I come home and I have like a, you know, nothing going on. And I'm really sick really thin so I go to the doctor Mm -hmm. oh wait you got physically sick I got sick okay so the Katie Kirk thing yeah okay I was sick so I go to the doctor and um, I'm I'm just run down and she Mm -hmm. does a urinalysis and she says you have double kidney infections whoa and we may need to hospitalize you if you don't get rest you need to go home and you need to rest which means you're basically doing nothing Wow. So for six years, I'd done nothing but do some, something. Wow. And now I have to do nothing. So while I'm doing nothing, it's not good. Because now I'm really thinking about my kids. Mm-hmm. And so it's all in the past. It's resentment, regret. That's what lives in the past, resentment and regret. And so you're thinking about your kids in that you could have been spending more time with them and you didn't to to build this thing and now this thing you feel like is worth nothing right oh that's a yucky place well it to was be. worth nothing it was it was like end of the road you've reached the end of the road wow like that it it was that wow really because yes. the kirk interview didn't go well it was the combination of all the things okay. i got sick the katie Couric, um yeah, and the no shows. Like the next thing seemed like you would get your own show or do something like that, and everybody was like, "No, no thanks, thing. can't do it." That's right. Oh god, and now you're physically sick, and you physically really can't do anything. Right. Oh god. And then I'm all in the future, which anxiety. is where fear and anxiety are. Yeah. Right. And I was able, and I so I was in bed for three months, and during that time, wow, I was really able to, um, you know. I mean, you can only imagine the myriad of, I was a victim, I felt sorry for myself, Mm -hmm. I was, um, everything, everything, whenever you're processing something, a loss, I mean, it was, Mm -hmm. it was, you know, who am I now, because remember what I said, this is momentum, Mm -hmm. so now it's at a, now it's at a stop, it's, it's at a standstill, Mm -hmm. so then who am I, what have I been doing, Mm -hmm. did I really want it, now, Here's the thing, you know, I always have listened, I was always listening to myself and I really thought that the, the 
the spirit of my understanding, which is takes many forms. For as many languages as there are, there are ways in which you can understand spirituality and yes. religiosity and all of that. So I'm bringing in my limited understanding of what that is for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I thought we were in, I thought we were buddies here. I All thought betrayed, that, yeah. yeah, I thought that I was doing your work, right? I thought that I was not enlightened, but I thought this is the gift of what I can give. This is my imprint. Yeah. And now it's being, you know, caught on fire. It's like singed out. Mm-hmm. So that was the three year, that took three years to, Ooh. to get through. And what conclusion did you come to? Um, well, uh, I decided that I couldn't stay in my marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, I realized that it wasn't him, it was me that was, um, I was suffocating myself mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. And I was doing it through that marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was, I was sick and I, would, I was lying in that bed and I knew that my, the effervescence of myself was going away. Mm-hmm. And I think that you only have a certain amount of that and then it burns out. Oh no. Is what I, that's my whole fuel. That's what I've heard. Okay. You only <laughs> have a certain amount and if you don't, if you don't cultivate it mm-hmm. and, and, and have balance with it and take care of it. Mm-hmm. And pay attention to it and be happy about oh, it. I think that's true. Yes. Then it will burn out, and mm-hmm. once it burns out, I don't know it's that it's harder to get it back. It's a lot harder to come back. Yeah. And usually, you don't even know if you can come back. Right. Mm-hmm. What was going on with your kids while you were sick? I was pretending like I was okay. Mm-hmm. Um. I um. I want to. I want to jump to something bigger. Okay. Okay. I mean, my, not that my children aren't bigger, but mm-hmm. here's what I want to. I want to tell you. Um. So that happened, and I decided that um, I was going to just let go of all of it mm-hmm. and not do it. And there are a couple things that I can tell you off camera that I can't tell you that will make sense in the story, but I can't tell you. Okay. Um, but what I can tell you is that. So it took three years for me to, to process through that. Mm-hmm. And at the, at the end of the three years, um, I, and this is a year and a half ago, I was um, already in this, I was already um, doing the divorce. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm going to tell you this. Um, there was a lot of anxiety, so I was very manic. Mm -hmm. What I know now to be manic. Oh. So I had an, I had an episode where I ended up, Mm -hmm. thank God I didn't have my children. I was, and thank goodness I had just gotten out of the car. Mm -hmm. So I, um, went into my house I got my dog. I decided to take my dog for a walk. Mm -hmm. And I heard a trumpet playing. Mm -hmm. And I followed the trumpet. And as I left my house, where I still believed I was myself, Mm -hmm. I walked toward the trumpet. And I believed that the person playing the trumpet was an angel of God's. Mm -hmm. And I went closer to him. And we started talking. And I asked him about his music. And he said, come inside and meet my mother. And we went inside. I met his mother, and I thought his mother was Mary. You see where I'm going with this? I do. It sounds like you were having a delusion. Yeah. So okay. what ended up happening was that I, with manic depression, which I didn't know I was manic. I'd never been diagnosed. Wow. So you had your first manic... Oh, no. You probably had other manic episodes. Maybe throughout my whole life. First. Wow. So that was the first... And then the three months was a depressive episode, most likely, right? I'm guessing. I don't know what it all was. Okay. But I'm telling you that the the you already know this. But with manic depression, you can either have extreme religiosity or sexuality. Yes. Right. I am aware. I many a client that I've worked with that that's suffer from bipolar disorder. 
So let me tell you, thank God it was the Jesus part. Okay. And not the sex part. Yes. That's all I can say. Yes. Is thank God for that. So I ended up on the lawn in the front yard and I actually believed that I was God, I was um, crucified on the cross. Wow. And that as the neighbors came Mm -hmm. to meet me, they were all a part of the crucifixion and the resurrection of my being. And so I don't even know who those people are because I don't, I don't know the Bible in that way. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, I knew exactly who all of the people were and what their, their purpose in Christ's Uh, resurrection was. It was crazy. And the fact that you remember is really interesting. I remember all of it vividly. And I remember when, um, the police officer came Mm -hmm. and they put me in cuffs and I was taken, I was 51, 50 Mm -hmm. and I was, put into a loony bin for 72 hours. So I remember all of that. So here's the question for you. Okay. So if we manifest, Mm -hmm. okay, which I believe that I will continue to do Mm -hmm. the hardest part for me going from, um, like I said before, when you're building toward something happening Mm -hmm. in your life, all of those experiences, are taking you to that place, Mm -hmm. right? So when you now are going to a new place, those are all brand new experiences that will take you to that new place, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to a new place, but I don't know where the hell it is, Mm -hmm. okay? Before, I kind of had an idea. I was, you know, I was on a food trajectory, right? Yes. Okay. So now I'm not going to leave my children in the dust. I wasn't really leaving them in the dust before, but... I felt like I was, mm-hmm. but now I'm back in LA. Okay. Mm-hmm. I manifest bringing that in. Mm-hmm. It was part of the negotiation that I had in my divorce that we have to move back to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what's, what's going to happen. Next? I know that I'm here. I know that my children are going to be here. I know that I'm centered in a way that I've never been centered. I know that I don't want to do anything that I did before with food. Hmm. I don't want to be on TV. Hmm. I had a nice time writing the cookbook, and it is a journal Mm -hmm. of my recipes that I get to, that people can buy. Mm -hmm. They can buy it. It's on Amazon. They can buy it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean anything else to me. Besides, I'm I'm so detached from all of that that happened because it didn't give me what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of anger there. Mm Mm-hmm. But acceptance, Mm -hmm. and in the same way that all sorts of extraordinary things happened for people, the same spiritual tenets and the way in which the world works bring together darkness and bad things too. Mm -hmm. They come together. Mm -hmm. It's not like they're separate. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh, you're a good girl and you've done all these fantastic things and so now you get the goodie basket. No, the dark and the light is always there kind of regardless of... You don't have to do anything. It's just part of our reality is that there's light and there's dark. And if you're human, you're going to experience suffering and pain. That's right. And I have. And out of that yes. comes some extraordinary growth, right? Which Absolutely. there's a lot of. So I have that. I It's a, a badge that I carry around with me that I'm very proud of. Mm-hmm. And I roll with all of that. Mm-hmm. So... And now I'm bipolar, diagnosed as bipolar. And this was diagnosed in your... I'm 49, so... In your 40s. Um, wow, that's so interesting, because usually the first bipolar um, episode happens in the early 20s. So this is... No, I was 49. Did you... Had you... When you look back now, have you had any other episodes of mania that you... That were undiagnosed or that were unrecognized as that? No. No. And do you think that during the time when you were building the business and doing everything that was that was years, manic, you were actually in me? This is what's nuts about mania. Most of the manic clients that I work with have a lot of them, not all of them, but a small percentage, some percentage of them have been really incredibly successful because the fuel that you feel when you're manic, mm-hmm. you can get a lot of stuff done. Yeah. And you were saying you were even saying you weren't sleeping at night. You were doing, you know, you were up all night and right. Lack of sleep is yeah. one of the thi- one yeah. of the hallmarks of mania. But it sounds like you weren't having any delusional symptoms or symptoms that were putting your functioning, putting your, 
you know, like you weren't having really any negative consequences. You were getting TV shows and businesses and mm -hmm. book deals and all mm -hmm. this stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was after it was that only that one time when you had that mm -hmm. manic episode and you had the delusions of uh, grandeur, grandeur and religiosity. But so and, here's the thing. Yeah. Before I forget, I just wanted I wanted to, I want to say this one thing. So that's why it didn't work out for the TV stuff. You see. You see? Yeah. You see? Yeah. Okay, so now I don't know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. But that's why I got sick. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. And I believe that. You got sick because why? I got sick because I needed to be diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And I also, if I really, really listened to myself when I was out on the road, huffing and jiving and doing all those things that I was doing, mm -hmm. I didn't really want to do it. Mm -hmm. There was a part of me was like, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I really want to be mm -hmm. part of that 5%. Because mm -hmm. if I'm working this hard right now, I don't know if I want to be doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's hard. You know, it would be easier if you yeah. have a whole crew of people and they're all handling you. And But you when know. does it get like that? But does when it does it point? get like that? I don't know. And I mean, I was a long way to Giada, you know, Yeah. or Rachel, I know, Ray, just, yeah. I was a long way. So I believe that now I know all of that mm -hmm. and I believe that um, I can't do all of those things anymore. I can't do 15 things at once. Mm -hmm. I can really do two. Yeah, self-care is incredibly important for anyone, but the regularity of one's schedule is so important for somebody that has... Struggles with bipolar disorder. Yeah. I mean, the, the sleep schedule, the eating, eating schedule, the it's just so important to do that. Yeah. To keep, to try and keep the balance. Yeah. Wow. So here you are, back in LA, ready for the next surprise. That's right. That's what it's about. Wow. What an incredible story. Amazing. Amazing. Will you tell us what's one spiritual principle or one ritual or something you're talking about, ceremony that you do every day? I look for kindness. In others and yourself? Yep. Yeah. Wow, I love that this interview ends on kindness. Hollis helps us to remember that you never know what somebody is going through, you never know what somebody is struggling with, and to take the approach of kindness in all your interactions is a beautiful thing. All right, guys, are you ready for the surprise? All right, Hollis has been so kind to give away a cooking class and eating experience for five of you guys. What you need to do to be entered into this awesome free giveaway is I want you to answer the question, how would you live your life if you were open to surprises? Now, you can write three to seven sentences and put it in the comments either on Facebook or on YouTube. So put your answers in the comments. You've got until next Friday and then we're going to pick our favorite five answers. Those five folks and a guest are going to get to go over to Hollis's house. David and I are going to be there. Hollis is going to be there and she's going to teach us to cook something extraordinary. This lady's a pro. And then we're going to sit around together and enjoy the ceremony of joining over food and talking. And I'm so excited to share this experience with you. We cannot wait to hear what you have to say. How would you live your life if you were open to surprises? Answer it now, and I'll see you guys next week. Always remember that you are complete, whole, and miraculous.